We're going to look at the first several rounds of replication, and then you should get a sense of how quickly you can produce large amounts of DNA using PCR. So here we have the two strands of our template DNA. We're going to add the opposing primers and TAC polymerase and the four deoxynucleotide triphosphates all at once in a single tube containing the template DNA. We'll heat the DNA to denature it at 100 degrees Celsius, and then we're going to cool it to approximately 45 degrees to allow the oligonucleotide primers, these opposing primers, to form H-bonds with their complements on either strand. And here they are, annealed or H-bonded to their complementary 17 or 18 bases or 20 bases, however many that was, in the complementary strands in the region of interest. And remember, these primers were created by knowing some sequence of the region of the DNA that we wish to, to get a lot of. The next step is to reheat to, let's say, 70 degrees or so, the optimum temperature for the activity of TAC DNA polymerase. Now, remember, the deoxynucleotide triphosphates are already there, and the two primers have annealed on opposite strands, and the polymerase is there, and it's active. So we're going to get DNA synthesis, and that's shown in the lavender strands that we've just extended in either direction off of the two templates. That's the end of the first PCR cycle. We're going to repeat the cycle of temperature changes. So what that does is it denatures the DNA at 100 degrees. At 45 degrees, the primers can now form H-bonds with their complements, and that's shown here, but now it's happening not on two strands, but on four strands of DNA, right? And when you bring the temperature back to about 70 degrees, the polymerase being still active can extend the fragments. If you look closely, you will see that we've made two new fragments in green that are actually quite different than any of the lavender fragments that we made. So we make two more lavender fragments and two green fragments, both different lengths. The lavender fragments could be quite long, but the green fragments only go out as far as the end of the strand that they're being made against. Now that marks the end of the second PCR cycle. I've not drawn the next or third cycle, but if you imagine denaturing these four double strands, in the next round, you are going to make another pair of long DNA, lavender DNA strands, but you're now also going to make the complement of each of the green strands, and they will only be as long as what you see here. Okay, so the asterisk strands, the short ones, are now going to double in the third cycle and each subsequent cycle. What you're really after are the asterisk strands. One more cycle, the third cycle, you'll have one double strand about as long as what you see here of the asterisk DNA. In the fourth cycle, you will have two double-stranded pairs, and so on. What happens to the long lavender fragments is that you get one more every cycle, and they don't contribute very much, but you can imagine if you keep doubling the short double strands now every cycle, you're going to have quite a bit. So the number of target DNA sequences doubles each round of replication after the third cycle. So starting after the third cycle, you get the, the target that you're really after beginning to accumulate in large numbers. So you can have fun doing the calculations to figure out how many copies of a gene sequence could you really get after, say, 30 rounds of PCR, which means, realistically, you start counting after round three, right? So round four through round 30, 26 cycles. I don't have the answer for you. You can figure it out. But I can tell you the number is, in fact, quite huge. Even though the number of copies is going to be somewhat lower than the theoretical limit you could calculate, it'll still be quite large. You can start with the DNA from a single cell or a single fragment that might be found, for example, at a crime scene, and produce microgram, or if you really want to, close to milligram quantities of that DNA. Now, microgram quantities, that's a millionth of a gram, and it might sound small, but it's actually the, the amounts of DNA that we typically work with, and if you want more, you can get more. You can get this microgram quantity of DNA in a matter of, uh, say, four to five hours using a thermocycling machine that programs all the temperature changes in that tube automatically, so you don't even have to babysit the tube. So, start with one or a few related clone sequences and use these to design primers, which will PCR amplify homologous sequences, for example, from the same organism or different organisms.